Self-service BI. What is self-service BI? Well, typically management in mid-sized companies, uh, they are the people who need reports, who need dashboards, who need to make more informed decisions. The issue is most of these managers, they are not necessarily computer savvy people. They are managing people. They are managing businesses, operations, and they use the computer as a tool. And when it comes to build reports, change reports, is usually something very sophisticated. So it's not self-service. They have to call an expert and ask for someone to build something else for them to get a new insight, a new, a new uh, question answered. The problem is quite often they need information now and they don't have a report for that and they cannot make an informed decision because they don't know how to do it. So self-service BI tackles that problem to allow business people to access information anytime, anywhere using desktop, web, and mobile devices. And if they don't have an existing report that answers the question, they can change it. They can create a new one if needed. Uh, my name is Johnny Girardi. I'm the CEO and founder of DataSelf. And we'll be talking about today uh, DataSelf analytics for Sage CRM and the, and the self-service BI behind it. Uh, I founded DataSelf BI, uh, DataSelf in 2005, about 10 years ago. And the vision of the company from the beginning is exactly the self-service BI. Uh, and the point is, uh, decision makers need this kind of technology. However, the real self-service BI is available from Fortune 2000 uh, kind of BI providers. And mid-sized companies typically don't have the budget, don't have the time, and don't have the expertise to take advantage of that kind of great technology. So the vision of the company from the beginning has been that we want to find in the Fortune 2000 BI technology that would fit the needs of the mid-market managers. We want to make that simple. We want to make that fast. We want to make that affordable. Uh, we came a long way in these 10 years in what we have today as a technology uses nothing but the best from the Fortune 2000 technology, as I'm going to show throughout the presentation, and that really delivers um, self-service uh, uh, self user-centric uh, uh, BI. So let's take a look at it, how it works. So first of all, uh, what I'm going to show typically can be done on, on web, on desktop, and mobile devices. I'm going to use the desktop approach. But here we're looking at a CRM information and I want to show how easy it is to build a detail-oriented report just by dragging and drop. So let's say I want to see um, open opportunities by account manager. So I find in my list the account manager, and I just drag account manager to my report, just drag and drop. So here are my account managers, and I want to see uh, potential sales. So I'm going to drag potential sales to my report. And there it is. I just built potential sales by account manager just by dragging and dropping. Well, maybe I want to see uh, these uh, potential sales broken down by the estimated close date. Well, I just drag and drop the estimated close date to my columns, for instance. And there it is. I would have seen uh, account managers and looking at all the open opportunities, what the estimate day is, and then it breaks down in this report. And I could easily you know, drill down from the year to the quarter level, I can drill down to the month level, to the, to the day level, whatever it is, just by drilling very, very easily that way. Well, but typically when you are analyzing, you want to slice the data in a very focused time period, you know, this month, this quarter, last quarter, this year to date, last year to date, this, I mean, this fiscal period, whatever it is. So filtering is important. And the way that we filter, let's say, dates is, you know, you just drag and drop the field into the filter shelves. And then you'll be able to just choose what kind of, you know, time bucket you want to filter by. Or you can use the relative date approach, which is the most popular. The relative is you select the, the buckets but then re relative to today's date. So if you choose this, it would be this year or maybe previous year 
or if you choose quarter, then it's previous quarter, or the last three quarters, or whatever it is. So just pick the bucket, pick you know what specific slice of the time, and then the tool would automatically take care of it. And as you move forward, you won't need to change the, the, the periods because it's always looking at the same period, you know, last quarter, let's say, or this year to date versus last year to date kind of thing. So I'm going to choose the last four quarters because it's going to catch uh, the quarter two, which is my last one in my sample database. And there it is. So I just narrowed down my report to a specific time period. Now maybe I want to break down this report by account, by product, by lead source, whatever it is. It's all drag and drop. So if I want to break down by account, I go to my account list. I take account name. I drag into my report. And there it is, by account manager, by account name. I see open opportunities. Maybe if I have products in my CRM, I want to break down by product. I just pick and choose product name, drag and drop, and there it is. So building detail-oriented report is just a matter of you know, drag and dropping what you want, selecting the fields, applying filters, and there you go. Again, this is self-service BI is a tool designed for business people to be able to become self-sufficient. For those who want, they'll become self-sufficient, they'll tackle their needs without calling experts. For the ones who are going to be relying on someone else, Someone else doesn't need to be a super, you know, specialized computer science person. It could be the assistant, the sales assistant, or the uh, accounting assistant that would be able to start spinning out reports very quickly, very easily. Now, the next type of report I want to show is a more trend analysis, uh, showing charts and maps and things of that nature. Also very easy to use. So let me build a new report from scratch. And I'm going to use actually another sales example here that I have what we call a sales connector. And the sales connector would have, let's say, sales information coming from the CRM system as well as the ERP system. It's all sales information. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It's all sales. It's a single sales connector. Well, let's see. I want to see sales. I just dragged my sales to my report. So here's my total sales in the whole company history. Well, I want to break down by month, see how things are growing over time. So I drag and drop my months, and then I see sales growing throughout the months and see how they're trending up. Uh, I have a multi-company framework, so I want to break down sales by company. Company means, uh, you know, um, several different organizations that I have consolidated into a single sales dashboard for corporate analysis. So if I want to break down by company, I drag my company to my color shelf. And now for every company, I have a different color line, and then I can see how they're doing individually. Uh, as I mentioned, I have sales from the ERP with the CRM information integrated. I'm going to be bringing number of meetings and put along in my dashboard. And there it is, just drag and drop. I have sales and number of meetings side by side. Just to tell them apart, I'm putting my number of meetings as bars while the sales will be aligned, so it will be very easy for me to tell in the future which one is what. Okay, that was a simple one. Um, I also want to build a dashboard showing sales by state. Uh, then I'm going to choose customer address, could be ship to information, anything that has an address I could use for mapping. I'm going to choose uh, state. I'm going to see sales broken down by the deal size, and I'm choosing the sales amount as my measure. And then I select the mapping capabilities. And let me make the bubbles a little bigger. So there it is. Bigger bubbles, bigger sales. And then each bubble is sliced by the size of the, the deal, small, medium, and, and large. And that was it. I just built a couple of, you know, trend analysis kind of report. And I want to give this information on a, on a dashboard format. And let's assume that my sales team uh, is using iPads for their sales efforts. So I'm going to design a dashboard that is optimized for the iPad uh, screen resolution. And now I just drag and drop um, first the map, and then I'm going to put at the bottom. I mean, I just drag and drop in whatever quadrant that I want. And there I have at the top the map, at the bottom the trend analysis, and that's it. In a few minutes, I was able to build a fairly sophisticated dashboard from scratch. And as you can tell, uh, you don't need to be a super savvy computer user. 
actually we have several of our clients, CEOs, VP of sales, sales managers, salespeople, they're actually building their own reports and dashboards as they need it. And the funny thing is, uh, in a group of people, typically the ones who are more um, computer savvy or data hungry are a subset of the whole group, sometimes a small subset. But if you give these users, the more data hungry users, a, a tool like this that will give them information anytime, anywhere, these people will make better decisions, they'll grow the business more quickly, they become more successful, and guess what? The other people who are not so excited about technology, you're going to see what are they doing in becoming so much more successful. I also want to do it. I want to, you know, you raise the bar, they don't want to fail, leave, uh, be behind. So what happens is over time, as you empower the data-hungry guys with better tools and they start becoming more productive, Many of the other folks will join the gang, will join the, 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 you know, the initiative because no one wants to be left, left behind. Everyone wants, be, wants to be more successful. Everyone wants to be more productive. So this tool usually helps you take your management team, your decision makers, and raise the bar for everyone, starting with a little group and eventually to everyone. So that's because it's self-service BI. It's user-centric. Let me tell a little bit about user-centric. Uh, this is my, my mom. Uh, my mom turned 80 last year. Uh, she lives in Brazil. I was from Brazil originally. And she never used a computer in her life. You know, computers are for experts. Too complicated, the mouse, the login, and so forth. Well, I gave her an iPad, and since then, she's been Skyping by herself with me, my, my siblings. She's been sending emails, checking the weather, and she even uses Facebook. Why? Well, an iPad is a user-centric computer. It's really designed for everyone. And that's what we do with reporting. We make reporting something that every person can easily retrieve information anytime, anywhere. And the ones who invest a little bit of more time, they'll be able to modify the information using the mobile devices and even create new ones from scratch. It's really empowering. Uh, not only that, but over the years since we founded the business, we have created more than 5,000 reports, dashboards, and KPIs uh, from scratch. So it's not only very easy to use, but your team will have a very comprehensive set of you know, reports and dashboards in a plug-and-play manner. Um, uh, These 5,000 combine CRM and, and ERP information. If you only have the CRM module, not the ERP module, there's about 1,500 reports, that's when KPI is only for the CRM part of the, 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 your business. But hopefully as you evolve your business, eventually you may use this technology for all the company, and then you can leverage all the actual reports we have for the ERP as well. Let me show an example of how, how this out-of-the-box solution works. So most of the users, you know, what I showed initially, initially is how people can build things from scratch. Uh, the reality is, at the beginning, most people will be, most decision makers will be consuming reports that are pre-configured by someone else. Many of them probably out of the box, but many built by, you know, some of your uh, business analyst team. Well, when they consume, typically they go to a web portal like this one, they log in, and they, they will have access to their own dashboards. So let's say the West team uh, salespeople will see only the West accounts. The East team will only see the East account. So by just by the user credentials, you can see that. And when you open a dashboard, let me show an example. If I open, let's say, the top customer by sales dashboard, and let's say I'm the rep for California, when I open this dashboard, it only shows my top accounts in California while let's say the rep for Florida opens the same dashboard, exactly the same, but only views Florida top customers, while the VP of sales opens the same dashboard and views top customers across all territories. So also this is very helpful because a single dashboard report can serve all different kind of people and the security behind the scenes will be sure that each person will only be able to view what they were granted the rights to. 
we also have a lot of you know reports out of the box which are uh, very informative especially you know from a sales initiatives you want to be sure that you're following up with the right accounts and let's say if you have uh, recurring accounts uh, you want to be sure that you're keeping track of you know who's growing and who's declining the most uh, in sales typically who is growing the most you know who they are because they're calling back they're placing orders so typically you know probably you're doing a good job with the top customers by sales growth uh, but what about the customers who are declining the most in sales? Why is that happening? Is there something you can do to fix it? You know, sometimes we salespeople are super busy taking care of people who are calling us back, and we don't call as often as we should the ones who are not calling us back. And sometimes they are leaving. And unless you act proactively to fix the issue in a timely fashion, they may be gone for good. So keeping track of things like that, you know, top growth and decline, uh, you know, by account manager, by customer, by product, by region, whatever the metric is, is usually critical. And we have several reports out of the box that will help you focus your time in things that matter the most. Also, you know, maybe you want to keep track of your sales and your, and your quotas and your commission frequently. Uh, and this is the kind of report we use for that. So this is like a little dashboard that shows as the month progresses and the days, you know, right now would be the 22nd of the month, uh, I see my, how my sales are accumulating throughout the month, and this is my sales target for the month. So, you know, I'm on the 10th, 22nd, hope I'm going to cross the target. And, and this, the bars would be the sales commission, so I see how much money I'm accumulating throughout the month. And maybe, you know, hey, maybe I want to receive this dashboard every Friday night because maybe over the weekend I want to buy something else or expend some extra money. So I don't want to actually go to the, to, the, to the report. I want the report to come to me. So you can actually just, as a user, you can subscribe to any of these dashboards. And when you do that, you can choose how often you want to receive the dashboard. And you just click subscribe, and now, voila. In this case, every Friday evening, I got an email telling how much my commission is. Maybe I can make decisions about my, my weekend. So the point is, is being a self-service BI technology that will give your users uh, functional that they will be able to do what they, they need to make more informed decisions. Let me go to the PowerPoint. How do we do it? Well, as I mentioned, the only way you can get self-service BI, uh, user-centric BI, is to using the best of the breed technology, which is pretty much only available for Fortune 2000 today. And what we have done is our latest technology uses nothing but the very best of the upper market. If you look at Gartner uh, analysis of you know the upper market BI vendors, Tableau and Microsoft are two top leaders in data set analytics leverages their technology. You know, we take Tableau, we take Microsoft BI, we add our own technology that el eliminates programming from these other technologies, so it's easier and simpler to maintain. And we have added more than 5,000 reports, dashboards, and KPIs out of the box. So we simplify and we amplify this enterprise-grade technology and make it affordable for mid-sized companies. So at the end of the day, you get a user-centered technology, the best available out there, is going, to is going to be fast to deploy, typically in hours or days to get it up and running. We have been working with uh, CRM systems for over 10 years with uh, enterprise-grade technology, so we know how to connect the two for mid-sized companies. And this technology costs really a fraction that if you try to take these vendors and build everything from scratch, it's really a fraction. So at the end of the day, the key benefits is, most importantly, giving your decision makers tools that will allow them to make more informed decisions anytime, anywhere. You can only do that with self-service BI user-centric. That's pretty much requires enterprise-grade technology like ours. And on top of that, we give a lot of reports available out of the box. So key benefit is empowering business people to make more informed decisions. Second is, if you're spending a lot of money today with reports, this technology will reduce 
the cost of those labor-intensive uh, tasks by more than 80 percent. So we're also going to be cutting your cost from a reporting maintenance standpoint. So that was the presentation. We have a few more minutes uh, until we wrap it up. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please use the GoToWebinar panel uh, to pop the questions, and I'm going to be addressing them right now. So let's see if we have questions. So let's see here. Uh, so question from, uh, from Fred. Uh, how long does it take to deploy this solution? Fred, thanks for the question. Uh, so usually, as I, as I mentioned, uh, the deployment per se takes a few hours. Uh, when we're deploying for CRM systems, typically CRM systems are highly customized to your uh, specific sales processes. So there's some extra uh, time involved to be sure that the, the deployment captures how your CRM system has been customized. And that extra time, sometimes it's just a few extra hours, sometimes a few extra days. Overall, in days or weeks, we'll get the system completely customized to your needs and, and, and ready to be trained, uh, ready to have your users trained and, and be uh, self-sufficient. Fred, thanks for your question. Let's see more questions here. So question from, from Zach. Uh, what uh, CRM systems are supported? Zach, thanks for the question. So if you go to our website, uh, dataself.com, and you click Analytics by Product, you'll see here that we have uh, Sage CRM in, oops, sorry. Sage CRM in sales logics are already available out of the box. So for those two systems, we already have uh, thousands of reports and KPIs configured out of the box. If you have other CRM systems, we also uh, can build the connectors quickly. So let us know when we'll, we'll give an estimate to do that. Uh, Zach, thanks for your question. Um, let's see if we have more questions here. Um, Let's scroll through the list here. Yes, there's a question here from, from, from Dan. Uh, how do you compare against Sage Intelligence? Dan, thanks for the question. Well, uh, Sage Intelligence and actually all the other BI products in, in this mid-market, or most of them, they are what we call mid-market BI solutions. Pretty good. Uh, they provide very good, very good value, but they're not enterprise grade. They're not designed for Fortune 2000 world. And do you really need that? Well, what you need from that is the user-centric side of it. And if you look at how easy to use our technology is comparing to the other folks, you'll see that this is really self-service BI, while the others, like Sage Intelligence, uh, will require an expert. Someone in the organization or a consultant will be the one doing most of the report creation and report modification. So they are what we call expert-centric technology. Works pretty well, but if you really want to give your management the extra edge to let them become self-sufficient, you need a fortune, you know, enterprise-grade technology like ours to really get the, given the, the, the kind of usability, uh, user-centric, and that self-service BI. Well, folks, uh, we schedule our webinar to be 25 minutes, so we're just going to wrap it up. We have a few more questions, but we'll address them on a one-on-one one, one, one basis. I want to thank you for joining us today. If there are more questions about uh, what we cover in the webinar, if you want to have you know, more information about our solutions or how we compete uh, specifically with other products or the kind of ROI we provide, please feel free to contact me. Uh, you'll find here my cell phone, my email, and my Twitter account. I hope you have a great Thursday. Have a great, oh, by the way, we're going to be emailing you links to a recorded version of the webinar the next day, so watch out for that. Thank you, and have a great Thursday. Have a good one. Bye-bye.